gourmet chef looking inside you. Well then, oh, give us a call and you could be a guest chef on the show Soup to Nuts. That's right, you could be sharing your gastronomic creations with all of us. So give us a call at 881-1653. Or if that's busy, then give us a call at 881-2189. That's right, you could be a guest chef on Soup to Nuts. Hi, this is Steve Sprague. Welcome back to Soup to Nuts. Um, I wanted to start the show with a little, uh, telling you a little bit about what I've been doing for the past two years. Um, I moved to Florida with my wife, Monica, and I worked at uh, Walt Disney World Resorts, and I worked in about 13, 14 different hotels and restaurants. Um, I went through their culinary program. And that's basically what I've been doing for the last two years. And I'm up here on vacation, and I decided that I wanted to do a show and share one of my recipes with you. Um, today what I'll be making is tenderloin of beef, which is also the Chateau, Chateau Brion cut. Um, and the way that I'm going to make them, um, if you can come, I'll give you a shot here of what's called mise en place, which means literally everything in its place. This here is the tenderloin of the Chateaubriand cut of beef. I have orzo pasta. I have just regular white rice, some breadcrumbs, some pine nuts that I've already cooked. What I did is I took the pine nuts and I put in some uh, sesame oil, some salt and pepper, and I put them in the oven. And I brown those. They're usually white, and I just brown them to a nice golden brown. I have some gherkin pickles. I also have a little bit of uh, beet juice and beets, some banana peppers, and a little bit of carrot. We also have some, I'm using Romano cheese for this recipe. You can use blue cheese, Asagio cheese, you can use Parmesan cheese. And over here, I also have a little bit of, um, what's this, flat leaf parsley that we're going to be using as a garnish. And I think that I'm going to start by moving a little of this over to here because going to need this area to cut. I had sort of a lot of extra stuff that I needed to show you. And what you'll want to do when you're putting down any cutting board to keep it from slipping is just wet a piece of paper towel or something and put it underneath and it'll keep the board from moving on you while you're trying to chop or cut it. Place that flat down, put that there, and it'll hold that in place. The first thing I'm going to start with, actually, is I'm going to start by grilling the steak. Now, hopefully, this grill is hot enough. I think it is. And what I've done is I've lightly salted and peppered these, and I've also put a little bit of sesame oil and olive oil on them. And that's basically the marinade. You can also put rosemary in with it and really cover it in oil, but... I decided I didn't need to do that. And I'm hoping that this will be hot enough for me. And I think that it is. Okay, now what I want to do here at this point is I don't want to, I don't want it to be too heavily cooked. We want to cook them about medium rare. Now you can cook them to any, any doneness that you want. If you like them well done, go ahead. But for this recipe, I, I prefer to have them medium rare. Now we have the meat on the grill, okay, and what I'm going to want to do now is I want to make what this is, let me get this undone here, it's going to be a breadcrumb cheese mixture, and what it's going to be used for is we're going to actually put this on the steak, and then the steak is going to be broiled. So what we want to do is just break off some of the cheese, go ahead and we can put that in there. That'll be fine. We'll use a little bit more. That should hopefully be about enough. We we'll also need some breadcrumb. Which hopefully that'll be enough. We'll see. If we need a little more, that's fine. Then what I'm going to want to do is we're going to want to peel some of this off. I pre-washed it a little bit earlier. that in like that. Now, check the beef here. Okay, well, I'll 
let that go a little bit further. And I need to get an egg. And if you don't have any eggs, you can go ahead and use a little bit of oil. You need something to hold that together. So what I'm using here is a little bit of sesame oil. And I'm also going to use a little bit of olive oil. Okay. That should hopefully be enough. We'll see. Okay, and I have some garlic up here that I'm going to take off of my display, and I'm going to break open. And move this over to here. What you want to do to the garlic, you want to press it, take the skin off like that. No need to chop it, because it's just going to go right into the processor. And you take off the end. You want to use about two decent sized cloves. Like so. That'll be fine. And that ought to work just fine. And you just clean up your work area. Take the hands off. Alright, now you want to whirl this around just a bit. Get it started. See how the mixture is. It's the first time I've used this. Now you don't want to do this too fine you want to have a little bit of a crumb mixture. You don't want to do it too fine. This is almost maybe a little bit more than that. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of water into that. You want to use cold water. The reason why is because if you put hot water into it, you may have a problem with the cheese melting a bit. So you want to go ahead and use I'll do this because it's a coffee cup. You want to use cold water for that. Okay. Go ahead and pulse that. Okay, and I want to check my steaks. And you want to turn these so you get a cross grill mark. And I'll show you what that will look like in a few moments. Okay. Now, this is what the mixture should look like. Just like this here. This is about the consistency that you're going to want it. You'll notice it's got a nice color to it. And since there's no raw egg in it, you can taste it. And that's going to be great. One other thing, where'd that go? You'll want to add to it is some pine nuts. Now, some people like to whirl those in with it. That's fine. But I like the presentation of the pine nuts in full size, especially with their color. Get this mixed in there real nice. Because that, if you notice, that gives it a real nice color to it. You get the, the contrast between the brown and the greens and the whites in it. And I, I just, that's the way that I like to do it. If you prefer it to be whirled in with the mixture, that's fine. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the recipe for this on the screen. And when I come back, we're going to start making the side dish, which is going to be a rice pilaf. 
And when we come back, I'll get the rice pilaf all set, and then I'm going to show you how to top the steaks. And I'll show you, we're going to put them in the oven and, and broil them and show you the rest of the recipe. Okay, now we've come back, now you've got the recipe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cup and a half of rice. And you can use more or less for whichever, whoever you're serving. Cup and a half of rice into boiling salted water. And what we want to do, stir that around a little bit. And you want to let this cook down. And that'll be the start of our rice pilaf. I want to turn that down a bit. Over here. Okay. All right, our steaks are coming along nicely. One of these here is, needs to be done a little bit more. Like this. Just a nice piece here. Okay. Now let's start on the vegetable medley that we're going to do, which is very simple, but it's also very good. We're going to do some zucchini and yellow squash, and I'm also going to do a julienne red pepper in it. These have already been taken care of earlier with washing, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the ends. And we're going to go ahead and slice down each one, like so, just like that. And go ahead and julienne these. You don't have to worry about getting too, too concerned about exact sizes or anything like that. If you were presenting this to a lot of people, you might want to use a kitchen appliance called a mandolin. And what that'll do is it'll give you uniform slices, uniform pieces. Down. It'll give you uniform pieces, but since we're just using this for this recipe, it's really not that necessary. And this will give you a good color arrangement, too. Now, with this pilaf, I'm going to show you in a couple minutes, it's going to have a lot of pickled vegetables in it. And it's, it's a different flavor that, that complements the, the steak with the well, I guess you call it robust flavor of the cheese. It's kind of strong. Um, the original recipe calls for blue cheese. However, I'm not a big fan of blue cheese, so I went ahead and used a different cheese. What you want to use for the cheese when you get it is it's got to be a harder cheese. For one thing, you don't want a soft cheese because it tends to get melt a little bit too much and it gets gooey, and that's not what you want. You want it to bubble on the top and look presentable. You don't want it to be gooing all over the, the plate. That's not what you want. And I think for the amount of people I need to be serving, I think this, how many? I cut up two of these yellow squash. That's probably plenty. And we're boiling over again. Turn that down just a bit more. Okay. And that's probably good. Now what I want to do is I want to put these in the water and I want to blanch them. Blanching them is just cooking them a very small amount, probably three minutes. You want to retain the crunch. 
You do not want to fully cook them. You want to retain their color, and blanching will do that. It will actually enhance the color. Another trick that you can do if you really want them bright is you can put in some baking powder, or baking soda rather. That will enhance the color of them. Some people say it's a little unnatural because it makes them glow, just about. We don't use it in the restaurants for that reason. But if you want that, that's fine. If you go to a restaurant and you see a, a plate of vegetables that look like they're glowing, it's because they put in some of that and some baking powder. It's, it won't hurt you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not very appealing to me. Let me make sure that these are all set. These are almost done. Almost, not quite. And those that are in there are probably almost done. Which I'll take those out in just a moment. I'm actually going to put in these with it. Let them cook just a little bit longer. And what I want to do is I want this on the grill. I want to grill that red pepper. We're having a mess over here. Let me get a little towel and wipe that up. Unfortunately, I grabbed a pan that was too small for the job. But that's OK. Now, when you present these, you want these to have a nice looking grill mark on them. And I also want to taste this, see how the steak is. Mm, that's going to be excellent. At this point, I now want to turn on my broiler. Make sure that that gets all set to go. And I want to, that's all set. I have a pan over on the other side. And those vegetables should be all set. Need to go ahead. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up the recipe for this medley of vegetables and I'm going to I'm going to finish it up for you when we come back. Now that you got that recipe, I've got the orzo pasta already done. So I'm going to bring this over and strain it off. And since it is pasta, actually if you went to Italy and you had pasta in Italy, they would never ever rinse it off. They leave it just the way that it is. However, here in America, a lot of people don't like the flavor of the starch, the heavy starch. So we usually rinse our pasta. That's all set. Let me make sure that that gets dried off a little bit. Okay, now, what I want to do to this is something a little bit different. I think I'm going to need a little bit bigger bowl. Let's see if we can't find something here for that. Right, I got something. I know where we can go. Ah, that'll work. No? That one there will work just great. What we want to do is we want to put the pasta just like that, in there. Then we want to take this beet juice that I reserved earlier and put that in with it. Now what that's going to do is one, it's going to add flavor to the pasta. That's a given. And two, it's going to add color. The pasta still has the ability to soak up so that'll turn a nice reddish color. Now I'm going to move my attention on over leave that there. Now I've already done two of the steaks with the with the uh, crust on the top and I'm going to do the third one now. It's basically you just take the, you could call it a stuffing mixture or you could call it, it it's supposed to be just a cheese crust but you put that on top and to make sure that it does not dry out you want to just drizzle a tiny bit of oil on the top not a lot. And we'll close that right up. 
This goes into the broiler. You can broil that for about three to four minutes or so. All right. Now I've got my workspace. Just wipe it down a little bit. And I have my pepper that I've gone ahead and cooked it a little bit. It's not necessary to go all the way with it. And put this over here and rinse it off. And do the best you can at peeling the, the skin off. If you can't get it all off, it's not a problem. It doesn't want to come off completely, and we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave most of the skin on it. You want to take the inside out, which is called pith. You just want to scrape that off of there, like that. Take the bottom off. Now, another thing, if you're ever cutting a, a pepper with the skin still on, especially when it's still very fresh, you want to be very careful. Because what you don't want to do is cut it on the outside. Because this waxy surface on the outside can sometimes hinder a knife and you end up going all over. You want to turn it to the inside and cut it on the inside, not the outside. And that ought to do just fine. Make sure it all comes apart. Do the same thing with the other side. Get the pith out. Drop it down that way. And that ought to be fine. Now, for my pan over here, I want to get this on the stove, get it hot, and I want to cook it in a little bit of olive oil. That ought to be plenty. Get my salt and pepper ready. And you can do this right in the pan with it, which is fine. And it should be enough salt. I'm also going to want some lemon in a little bit. I don't need it right this minute. Get that all set. Another thing that's going to go into this recipe, you can add as much or as little as you want, is banana pepper. This happens to be pickled banana pepper. You just want to cut it like this. You can leave the seeds right in. That's no problem. If you don't want the seeds in there, take them out. And I'm going to do two banana peppers. That should be enough for this recipe. Now what this is going to be for is the pilaf. Make sure you don't get any big chunks like that. And mix that together. Another thing that I'm going to want in there is some pickled beets. Go ahead and chop those up the same way. Now, a lot of people think that rice pilaf is the stuff that you get out of a box. However, a rice pilaf can be anything that you want. You don't need to get that stuff that comes out of a box. You add a ton of butter in it. It's, you know, it's not necessary. Another thing I want to use, I want to use gherkins. You want to use dill gherkins if you can find them. If not, sweet can be a good substitute. And go ahead and chop those the same way. You don't have to chop them uniform. It doesn't have to be in any certain, any certain uh, size. You just want a medium to a small dice. Actually, this isn't even a dice. I'm just chopping these. A dice would mean that they were square. One eighth by one eighth by one eighth is a small dice. But I'm just chopping these. Don't have to be that fine. You want bite size? Well, not quite bite size, but good size pieces. And that goes right in and gets sauteed. And you can go ahead and flip that around a little bit. You want to heat it just to hot, not necessary to cook the heck out of it. 
You're going to want to add a little bit of lemon to it. You're going to want to taste it for the flavor. Make sure you've got enough salt and pepper in it. Use a little bit more salt and a little bit more pepper. Turn that up a bit. And you want to check the oven and see how our steaks are doing. Those are doing great. I think those are done. And make sure. Look all right. Those look like they should be just about done. Now I already have my rice over here and into it I'm going to add that. And from there I'm going to go ahead and add the orzo, which I want to go ahead and rinse out. Normally you would be able to let the orzo sit a little bit longer, but this will do. It's had plenty of time in there. Put that right in with it. Mix this around. You can add butter if you want. I don't add any to this recipe, but if you want some, that's fine. Okay. And I usually like to add also a little bit, where are we here, of parsley. You can use dill if you want. That'll accompany it pretty well. Sure, there's nothing in your way. Make sure that's good and chopped. And that ought to be fine. No need to chop it real, real super fine. Mix that in. And make sure that that's all set. Now, I'm going to put the recipe for this up. We're going to come back. We're going to do a very simple dessert that will accompany this well. And then we'll wrap up the show and I'll present this all to you. That's it for another edition of Soup to Nuts. Uh, we've got our vegetable medley over here, our rice pilaf and our steak. We also have our dessert. And I'm just going to give this a little taste and see how it come out. I need to cut that down just a little bit smaller. Mm, come out excellent. And this is Steve Sprague with another edition of Soup to Nuts. Reminding you to keep your elbows off the table. Enjoy your meals. Have a good night. Picasso painted the old guitarist during a period of depression that lasted four years. His blue period. Today, with new discoveries, 80% of depressive disorders are being successfully treated, giving hope to millions that maybe now nobody has to have a blue period.